I'm Dr. Keith Hiscock, MBE. I'm an Associate Fellow at the Marine Biological Association here in Plymouth, and I'm going to talk about the octopus bloom in 2025 and what's led up to that. We had an outburst of common octopus, which the fishermen immediately discovered because they were going into their pots and taking shellfish. And that sort of information came through to a project which we run, including from here at the Marine Biological Association, called Southwest Marine Ecosystems, the State of Southwest Seas. And that's been following change in uh, Southwest England seas uh, for 15 or so years now, and providing an account of how things are changing, whether it's due to um, adverse environmental effects, whether it's due to seawater warming, or whether it's due to we don't know what. Uh, but hopefully with a long-term data set, we'll gradually put the bits of the jigsaw together and we'll be able to um, account for some of these changes, which you know do people find both interesting and sometimes worrying. But, but back to the octopus. Um, in the Southwest Marine Ecosystems uh, program, uh, we recorded in 2023 because of good observational work um, down at the Porth Keris Dive Centre, uh, particularly by David Roberts, uh, a female octopus with its hatched eggs. So David took a photograph of that female octopus with her hatched eggs. The female was by then dead because once they finished looking after their eggs, they've done their duty and they die. But it told us that the octopus were breeding uh, in British waters. Uh, things went a little bit quiet then, that's 2023, end of September 2023, um, until this year, uh, and, and until 2025, when the octopus population absolutely took off and became headline news, particularly because they were going into lobster and crab pots and they were taking the catch. And the fishermen obviously um, were very concerned about this, um, until perhaps they realised they could make a lot of money out of it. And by exporting um, to Spain and Portugal, um, fishermen have done very, very well financially out of the octopus boom. But they still would like to continue to see crabs and lobsters and carry on with their traditional catching. So that's another part of the project which the MBA is leading on, um, is to actually put together an account of what's happened in 2025, and what might happen in future years? Are the octopus here to stay? Now I see octopus, and I've deliberately targeted a few sites to film octopus, and photograph octopus, and certainly uh, sites in, in Tor Bay uh, and down on the Lizard have been hot spots for octopus, and where I've got most of my photographs. And there are quite a lot of photographs coming in of octopus dens, because the females, once they've mated with the males, will build a den for themselves. Now that might be the end of a cave, it might be under um, a boulder. Quite often they're conspicuous because they make barricades. They pull boulders and shells and so on up to build a barricade. And what you're left with is just a sort of letterbox size hole, which you know a diver can peer through, shine their torch through, and inside see the female um, usually just the tentacles with the suckers on, sometimes the eggs, um, hidden away in their den for up to three months while they keep the eggs clean, ventilate the eggs and so on. And, and there are lots of very good photo images, photographs coming out now of the females in their dens with their eggs, including ones at the beginning of September, which were just about to hatch or some which had already hatched. So perhaps some of those Females and males which had mated at the end of May, built their dens about then, were just beginning to hatch their eggs by the beginning of September. So this is observation by people who are not marine biologists, who are not diving as part of their work. They're just making observations because they have a fantastic curiosity with uh, marine natural history. And that's exactly what contributes to uh, our findings in the Southwest Marine Ecosystems annual reports. When we come to things like outbursts or blooms of octopus, long-term data and information is really important. 
And when I first spotted an octopus um, out at the Eddystone Reefs in 2019, um, I did a little bit of homework and I looked at the Plymouth Marine Fauna, which was a publication last produced in 1957, and which documents all sorts of fascinating information about occurrences of marine species, about outbursts of marine species, about when they reproduce, how they reproduce, uh, their larval biology. Uh, really important information for assessing importance uh, and sensitivity and so on. And that told me that there had been an outburst, it was called a plague at the time, of common octopus in 1900, another outburst in 1950, and now we're seeing from the French side of the channel that there also seems to be an outburst in the early 1920s. So we were talking about a sort of 50-year uh, gap between outbursts of octopus, but also when we're having the current one, we can say, you know, it has happened before. This is not necessarily completely because of climate change and seawater warming. Um, we don't know exactly why it happened in previous years, except it does seem that uh, there were mild winters. So perhaps an octopus bloom follows on a mild winter. And that's where us marine scientists need to get together so that the oceanographers who collect seawater temperatures, the marine biologists who make observations, can help to fit bits of the jigsaw together and determine what caused these particular events. The octopus outburst may be just one of several changes which are occurring as a result of um, seawater warming. The seawater warming, you know, it doesn't sound very impressive. It's only a sort of about two or three degrees um, in the last, say, 10 years over and above average, but that's enough for certain species which are used to warmer waters to come in. And what we're seeing this year is we're seeing a much greater number of a fish, a rather pretty fish, called a comber. And that comber is something which the anglers used to catch very, very rarely. But now people are seeing up to, you know, about a dozen in a dive, sometimes even more than that. So I think that, you know, some of the warm water species which we're now experiencing um, probably are the result of warming of seawater temperatures, perhaps especially mild winters. Uh, there are a lot more to catalogue and that's exactly what Southwest Marine Ecosystems does every year, is to report on those warm water species which have now turned up in our waters and which uh, are telling a story. Um, that story might, <laughs> might not be of death and disaster, it's just a curiosity in many cases, but in some cases um, there are radical changes occurring, although most of those, I must say, are due to non-native species which have been deliberately imported for mariculture purposes. So seawater warming, shifts in distribution, curiosity, non-native species which need warm water and which are now dominating some of our shores, no, that should never have happened. <laughs>